This is a powerful, smart and very promising robot vacuum by iLife called the A11. And if you can sense just a bit of excitement about it, I have the usual proposal for you. Let's inspect! Welcome, nice to meet you. I'm Michael, your tech Mishka. On the channel here we inspect fresh and cool tech and today we want to inspect something which is coming from the company iLife, which is a very special to me company because um, my first robotic vacuum cleaner was the iLife V7, something I bought back in 2015. Yeah, 2015. Such a long time ago. So fast forward to now, 2022. Apparently they're still in business with something which is a lot smarter, a lot more advanced and according to their website this A11 model is supposed to be the carpet cleaning expert. But is it? We're about to figure out uh, whether this thing based on LiDAR and SLAM navigation and a lot of decent brushes is as good as it's supposed to be. There are a whole lot of different robot vacuums which are a lot more popular. Think of iRobot, Roborock, Viomi, Dreamy, Proceeding and many, many others. Besides the hardware capabilities, for these smart home devices it is extremely important to have good software, especially about smartphones, because having quick and reliable access to many features is going to be crucial. In that regard, iRobot and Roborock seem to be very advanced but iLife also have a smartphone app, which we will get to know in just a few minutes. Priced at $400, it is not as budget-friendly as some of the older iLife models, but gives me hopes that the company has stepped up its game and the features are a lot better these days. So, unboxing. It's been a few years since the last time I've had an iLife device in my hands. Back in time when most vacuums were still not able to create maps, iLife products were among the best. So reading about all these features which are stamped on the box makes me eager to try it out. We're gonna be very quick about checking the assembly, some instructions and warranty terms as a starter, the charging station, a regular dustbin with HEPA filter, the power adapter, a rubber main brush, remote control, mop cloth, and here's the iLife A11 itself. Pretty nice is to discover that the app QR code is stamped at the bottom. You can well see the wheels and the regular main brush. I also have discovered the USB port. Guess this one is for troubleshooting or possible firmware updates. Apparently there already is another dust box inside the vacuum, meaning that you have two of them. And here's the side brush, very easy to mount. Build quality seems to be alright, nothing premium but also nothing that feels cheaply made. Modern construction, lighter sensor on the top. Specification-wise, we can count on up to 4000 Pascal suction power, 5200mAh battery, VSLAM based on infrared detection, multi-map support, dustbin with capacity of 450ml, the extra hybrid dustbin which is used while wet mopping, multiple safety sensors, weight of 3.5 kilos and a smartphone app which is called iLife VAC. Specs so far sound good, however not great. For example, suction being 4000 Pascal, it's among the really well-performing robot vacuums out there. Uh, the battery is also with very good capacity, 5200 milliamp hours, and I'll tell you something very important about it in the next minutes. Um, in terms of navigation, the robot is also very decent because it counts on LiDAR and SLAM both, so combined they would produce really accurate maps of the rooms that the robot is working at. And the good advantage, according to iLife, in the smartphone app you can preserve between 10 and 20 different maps. That's pretty nice because it would support multi-room or multi-floor houses. To the missing features, although this thing is called the carpet cleaning expert, there is no dedicated carpet mode, which is uh, a feature that uh, some other competitive devices are using in order to boost the suction power should they detect fabric underneath. And also there is no auto-emptying station apparently, which some other devices in the same price niche are also supporting. So now I'm really curious about the actual performance. Of course, I've put the robot under my regular testing cycles where the assessment is covering both wet and dry cleaning. I do have some remarks about the dry cleaning. Yes, it covers the basics, but sometimes pieces like rice grains are being pushed away by the side brush and somehow not being collected. 
This is indeed a surprise, and as you can notice from my regular rice test, attempting to collect as much as possible out of 60 grams of spilled rice, looks like iLife A11 has not been excelling in that regard. I did notice this behavior even before filming this test, because the robot was often missing little pieces of bread during the cleaning cycles. I do believe this lack of efficiency is based on two factors. Firstly, the way the side brush acts, because it always operates at a steady speed, while some other models do change the rotation speed based on the surface cleaned. And the section mode that I've gone for, which is the normal mode, if you switch to the highest possible setting, the robot becomes really noisy. There is one more observation to make. I believe the motor used by iLife is not that efficient, because it consumes almost 2% battery per square meter, whereas Roborock S5, in the same environment, will consume less than 1% per square meter. Both of the results are captured while the robots are operating in their normal mode, and Roborock even has the carpet mode switched on, which consumes a bit more battery. The rest seems to be fine. The robot easily climbs onto high carpets and also reaches the dust in most of the corners of the room. The algorithm seems to be good, no spots are being missed. Wet mopping is also an option. In order to use it, you're gonna need to install the hybrid tank. Here comes one of the strengths of the A11. Wet and dry cleaning are possible at the same time. The hybrid dust box has capacity of 300 milliliters for dust and 180 for water, which is about enough for proper cleaning a 50 square meter big room. It uses a standard algorithm for covering the mopped area. You can use the app to specify specific zones to be cleaned. However, there is no added value with the wet mopping. Some vendors adopt Y-shaped mopping, where the vacuum goes back and forth so that each spot gets triple treatment. Others, like the more advanced Roborox vacuums, adopt sonic cleaning, which literally scraps the floors. Just the basics here, which makes the A11 performance not too much different to the behavior of robots from 4-5 years ago. Now, let's take a look at the smartphone app. It's called iLife VAC. Design is not superb, but good enough to let you access the main features and get to know more about the cleaning tasks, the battery state, and also to adjust maps and select the cleaning zones. There are two interesting modes to highlight. The so-called scrubbing, which as it turns out works pretty well with the rubber main brush, and the double clean mode, which is also a good idea. As for settings, you have the ability to adjust certain functions, quiet hours or the volume of the speaker, which by the way often has very useful announcements. There is a firmware update feature, which is also good, however, I got no firmware upgrades during the two-week period of testing. And you can also follow up on the status of the consumables and replace them or clean them when needed. I think the app belongs to the good ones, doesn't offer that many advanced configuration options, but covers the basics. I couldn't find a way to define no go zones or no mop zones, maybe something iLife could address in future updates. Speaking of improvement ideas and drawbacks, I would add the motor efficiency, the really noisy maximum section mode and the lack of carpet mode. Overall, I feel like this robot could have been great if they have released it like two years ago. But now I think there are better deals when you think about bang for the buck. You know, motors from Dreamy, Mova, Smart360, even ProScenic, they, they might extract a little bit more out of the technology at the given price point. But still, this is overall a good choice, especially if you, if you favor iLife as a brand. I believe that this robot can get a little better in terms of software and firmware and possibly these improvements could make it into an even better choice but question is how far really iLife can go through firmware updates so what do you think is this body a hit or is this a miss and do you have better recommendation at the price point of around $400 maybe we can carry on the conversation in the comment section below the video. But overall, I'm really happy to see that iLife are still in business and they still are doing rather competitive products. So in the end of this video, I'd like to thank you for being with me today and hopefully you've learned something new and it was fun. I'm your tech Mishka and really look forward to seeing you in our next episode. Bye!